Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we're going to talk about building an ebook server on top of the small micro scale Raspberry Pi network attached storage based on Open Media Vault. So, what we're going to do is I need to start out with uh, first and foremost, what are we doing? Why, why do we want to do this? Well, we want to try and get off of the dependence on Kindle, on Kobu, and on all of these other ebooks um, platforms that are all proprietary. We want to have some form of means to to uh, read books, have access to books without them being able to take them away. This does prove some imperative challenges. There are many ebooks you cannot get without DRM. That is in and of itself a certain problem. There's another issue that the syncing between them is still kind of rudimentary. In fact, the last time I did this server, it simply wasn't possible. Right now, it looks like it is starting to become possible. That's going to be a video idea later as I explore putting this on the internet rather than just putting it on a network attached storage. But we're also going to talk about how to sync that later on. Right now, I just want to be able to talk about having a basic ebook server that I can grab those books and put them on individual devices. Uh, should I need to do that? We're adding this on top of the micro scale Raspberry Pi Open Media Vault based on Open Media Vault 4, I believe it is. I don't think it's 5 yet. I think it's still 4. And uh, I did the whole video on that. We're just adding it to this. Now, of course, one of the challenges that I have right now with my current setup is that I am actually in a mobile office space right now. And so being in a mobile office space as I am, then um, what we're going to deal with is the fact that in this case, my Open Media Vault is not always turned on. And I have encrypted everything. So I have to have ways to get around the fact that the drive, when I boot it on, I have to manually intervene to decrypt the data drive before things are mounted. And fortunately, as we switched, as we upgraded about a year, year and a half ago from Open Media Vault 3 to Open Media Vault 4, and it wrecked the uh, system D platform of enabling the Calibri server and I patched it with the cron job, it turns out that that's exactly what I would need to do in this case. So hallelujah, we already have our solution for that. So the basic steps of what we're going to do today, we're going to create the Calibri server, basically install the software packages. We're going to set it to auto run on boot, but we're setting it to a five minute time delay to give myself some time to get in and decrypt the drives. We need to have a way to automatically add books to the server, and then we need to access the books from any device on the network. Now, the first couple steps that I've done is I've already went into my Open Media Vault, and I have um, decrypted my drive. So land on Open Media Vault, come on down to disk encryption, and make sure that my drive is unlocked. All right, so... What we're going to need to do is first we're going to install the packages and then we're going to come back into Open Media Vault and we're going to add a new file share inside of here. We're going to be looking at uh, shared folders. We're going to be adding a user and then we also need to go in and add that new folder under SMBCIF. And uh, we're going to do that in order to get everything here set up. So over here we are logged into the... OMV here. This is Raspberry Pi OMV, and uh, I've dropped down to root. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install Calibri. So we're going to continue. This could take a little bit of time to load. Calibri is a little bit larger of a system, so it's going to download everything, get everything installed and set up. Now, there's going to be a few other applications that we need to install. Um, these are going to be um, XVFB, which is going to allow a virtual uh, server. We need XAuth, which I believe that one is needed to run the Calibri database systems. It does need Image Magic, which Image Magic is going to be installed on most of your systems already. But just in case, we're going to go ahead and add that one as well. All right, so Calibri should be installed. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install uh, X. VFB, XAuth, and Image Magic, which Image Magic is probably already installed, but let's go ahead and do that anyway. 
just in case it's not there. So looks like a few of them. Image, uh, Image Magic is already installed. Uh, X Auth is already installed. That's actually the one that was not installed um, for me before. And the uh, other one, XVFB, that one does need to be installed. So there's no problem trying to install something that's already there. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so then the next thing we need to do is we need to create a library. And what we're going to do first is I want to make sure that I have my Open Media Vault shares set up. So we're going to head on over here. And if we head on down and uh, look at what we have here, we need to look at our shared folders. Here's all the different shared folders I have. We're going to add a new folder. I'm going to call this folder Calibri. I'm going to use lower crate, lower case because that's what I'm using throughout everything here. And then we're going to select a device that's going to be this guy here, which is our only path there. And then here is our path. And then our um, administrator can read, write, etc. We're going to go ahead and create that. Now we have to hit apply in Open Media Vault to go ahead and change these guys here. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to create a new user. So we're going to come over to new user and you can see here I just have the admin which is the one that I use um, for pretty much accessing everything but we're going to go ahead and add a new one and what this guy is going to be called is Calibri again. I'm going to give it a password which I have over here. And then over here, we're going to save this guy here. And this adds a new, uh, a new guy over here. We're going to hit our apply. Okay, so we want to select the new user, hit our privileges button. And then over here, we want to read write on the Calibri folder. And what this is going to do is it's going to set this particular user can only access things inside of uh, inside of the Calibri folder. It can't do anything else. This is going to be the user that we are adding to our FS tab to make sure that we have a user to manipulate the files on the system without that same user being able to manipulate anything else on the system. So now we're going to go ahead and do that. And now the last thing I want to do is I actually want to go in and create a folder. So my admin user here can actually access everything, uh, including the newly created folder that, that we have. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to go into my network, go into my drive. All right. And so we're going to go into our admin. And here's our Calibri. And the last thing I want to do is create a new folder called to add. So the to add folder, anything I drop into there is going to automatically appear in the library. So that's all we need to do on Open Media Vault for now. Let's just go over to Project Gutenberg and let's find a book. Let's go with, uh, let's see if I can find something from D.L. Moody. Why not? Uh, thoughts for quiet hour. That sounds good enough. Let's go with, we'll just grab the EPUB with no images. We're going to save the file. That should drop itself into my downloads folder. And that would be that one there. Let's go over here, Calibri, and to add. All right, so we're going to drop that. That is now on my NAS. So now that our share is set up and we have dropped a book in the folder there, now what we want to do is we want to use the FS tab system to mount the individual drive where we want it to go. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to make a directory and we're going to make the directory and for simplicity we're going to do it in home pi calibri. Okay, so now let's go to that directory, home, you can see there's pi, and then now we have Calibri. So now we want to do one more directory, 
make directory and to add. So now we have the new directory to add. So next what we're going to do is we're going to edit the FS tab. And so this is what this file looks like. And we're going to paste in the code. So this part here, slash slash 192.168.5151 is the OMV drive. This is the folder we added and the to add. And then we're going to mount this to home pi calibri to add. We're going to give it our username and our password. Okay, so we're going to write that. And then we can remount everything at any given time with mount dash a dash t c i f s. And now if I go into my to add, now we'll see that my, uh, my EPUB is there. So with that done, now what we're going to want to do is we want to run the command to add the book into our server. So we're going to run um, xvfb-run Calibri DB. We're going to add whatever's in home pi Calibri to add. And then we're going to add this to the library. And it should actually... I'm not sure if this should be library path. I think this should be dash dash with library. This I think has changed a little bit. So we're going to give this a try first. So home, pi, and calibri. So hopefully this will work. And I have that right. So it has added that right. So if it's correct. Now here we'll see the unknown, which is going to be, uh, they don't have the metadata set up for the book that we've downloaded, right? So it shows up as unknown. If the metadata was set up, it would show up as the actual author name. Um, and the meta D, uh, metadata.db, that is actually your Calibri library. Now what we need to do is we need to start the server, and that should be... Calibri server and then just name uh, the folder where it is. So home pi Calibri. And if this is correct, we should see it's listening on our port here. So it's port 80 at 192.168.5151. So now if we jump on over here, let's try that out. 192.168.5.151 colon 80.80. Now we have uh, choose the library to browse, and then this is the book that we grabbed. So here it is. We can download it. We can go to the next or to the previous. All right. And stop that guy there. Make sure this guy still works. <laughs> I just canceled the script. That's perfectly fine. Okay, so now we have our library is created. Uh, we have our um, we have our our library. Uh, our server has been started. We've added a book in there. We have added a um, an FS tab. Now what we want to do is we want to get this guy started. So at this point in the video, I actually had to stop and do some re-recording because it turns out that Calibri had some worse choices and design decisions than Audacity did. Holy crap, have I never seen a program go so bad from one version to the next. Everything from the web interface to how to actually manage it. So what we were going to do initially is set up a simple cron job script that every 10 minutes would go in and add whatever you would add to that to add folder into the database. Unfortunately, the new version of Calibri does not actually allow you to add anything to the library while the server is activated. It says it's not a good idea. Well, thank you, genius. I don't care if it's a good idea. Update my library. And I'm about to swear. Beep. Okay. So what you actually had to do is stop the server in order to do that. Unfortunately, they also don't make it easy to add as a server because daemonizing it seems to have other problems and updating the library the way that they want to errors out. It's possibly the application is not working correctly on 
a um, uh, on the Raspberry Pi version here. Maybe it would on the Debian version. Or maybe you have to create the new user management um, and pass it a username and password as I have not had to do in the past. But regardless, the Calibri DB add function will not work if the server is working. And I could not get the Calibri server into the system services properly either. And so what I had to do at this point in time is run my cron job that it will only update the library on boot before the server starts. So let's go ahead and walk through some of the changes that I did from my original script and my uh, new, um, uh, the original script in the original screen recordings that I had. And we're going to go ahead and walk through now what the changes happen to be and how to do that. So what we see here is if we are attempting to add the Calibri DB, you can see it says another Calibri program, such as Calibri server or the main Calibri program is running. Having multiple program programs that can make changes to the Calibri library at the same time is a bad idea. You know what? Sometimes we have to do bad ideas. Calibri DB can connect directly through the, uh, to a running Calibri content server to make changes through it instead. See the documentation with the... Uh, with library options for details. I read the documentation. There's nothing there. There's nothing there, Calibri team, if you are watching this. So what we actually had to do is I made some changes to the mostly to the cron job startup script. So what we're going to do is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my Calibri um, dot sh script. Now, this is part that I edited out of the video. This is a script that we put into slash bin slash Calibri dot sh. And then we're simply starting the Calibri server at this particular location. What I need to have happen is that this is the last thing to load and we cannot actually add new books to the server while this is running. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go in and we're going to do our cron tab. And now instead of doing what I originally wanted to do is just run the Calibri um, .sh bin just to start up the system and then run the library add function every 10 minutes to update the library like logically. And by the way, um, the forum posts were like Apple forum posts. Um, guys, I can't seem to add stuff to the library. Well, you shouldn't be updating servers while they're running. Um, moron, that's the purpose of a server. And they could not get this through their head. So I'm not sure what type of alien invaders have taken over the Calibri team, but holy crap, have they gone stupid. Um, but this is what I had to do as the workaround for my particular setup. So at the reboot, I give myself now 180 seconds, which is three minutes in order to decrypt my drive. So I start up my NAS and I have three minutes from the startup time to decrypt my drive. Plenty of time. And then we are going to manually mount the servers. This will mount the to add folder into the server on the, the drive. This will add the, the to add into the Calibri folder in order to update. And then about just giving that about 30 seconds to mount everything, which is plenty of time. Now it's going to add the Calibri add script with the library into the specific, specific location and then remove everything from that folder. In other words, it's only going to add things on a server reboot. So if I'm throwing books into my server and I want to get those books, I'm going to have to throw the books in a server, reboot the system, and then go ahead and get them added. Thank you, guys. You guys are swell peaches. And then the third thing is I wait about another, um, about another, um, what is that, about 90 seconds, so about another minute and a half. And then we're going to run the Calibri.sh folder there, which is going to actually start the server. This workaround worked perfectly fine. And in my particular case, I don't, it doesn't really have a problem with me getting in here and um, making the changes to um, to the server just once on reboot since I reboot, reboot my system all the time. Now, if this were still my server sitting at home that's always on, yes, this would be a huge problem. In my case, it doesn't. For me, this is a workaround. Now, I do want to try and experiment with the Calibri server live that we can update, as I said in the introduction to the video here. 
And I will look to fixing this on that case. But in the event that's not you and you just need a quick workaround, this is the workaround that worked for me. So this is now my cron job. And then on a system reboot, I went ahead and found out that everything here worked fine. So there we have it, guys. The Calibri team completely screwed up the UI. It completely screwed up the server and even made it that you cannot update the server while it's running. And I couldn't add it to a system service very easily. What my original goal was is run that 10-minute cron job, shut down the server, update the library, reboot the server. But I couldn't find a way to do that because the Calibri server command does not actually have an option in there to shut the server down. Oh boy. But anyway, I digress. Oh well, it's still better than using Kindle and Kobu, but I've never seen a program diverge so poorly in the past. So there we have it. So we've walked through everything. Now we've already done creating the whole Open Media Vault in a prior video. This is excellent. I ran this for several months as an always on system. It worked flawlessly. Um, I ran it with a larger computer before that, but I wanted to scale my power down because, yeah, I'm living in a mobile space now and I have to watch my power consumption. Okay, but now we've added an ebook server on top of this. We've waited until five minutes into it. It's going to boot the server on. We're going to add a bunch of books into that. And really, that's what our, uh, our process is going to look like. So now all I need to do is jump in here add all my different books in here and then it will populate itself up and then any device that I want these books on I can just go right on into the ebook server and go ahead and download those books so there we have it uh, let me know how helpful this was to you and uh, if there's any questions about it leave those in the comments and I will try and get to those comments as soon as I can so thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy... Switching to Linux.